previously during the investigation. Okay then, Zack. Let's pay Harry another visit and get to the bottom of all this. And that one. And that one too. All red seats. Welcome, York. The killings 50 years ago. There is something about it that you won't find written in those files. The people were attacking and killing each other, rampaging as though insane. Quite a story. York, I told you. It's nothing more than local folklore. What does that all mean? It's called the legend of the new raincoat killer. York, we found Thomas. Zack. Okay, so it's not bonus footage. It's still part of the main feature. Perpetrator is exactly who I thought it was. Hello, and welcome... Dad? Hello, and welcome... <laughs> Come on, boy, or it'll be too late. Hello, and welcome to episode 32 of my playthrough of Deadly Premonition. This is episode 4, the very beginning of it. <coughs> and we are in another dream sort of sequence, playing as young York. That over there is Dad. Um, his name actually gets revealed here in a little bit. <coughs> but for right now, we are chasing him through this forest. This is the fastest that young York can um, move. So get used to saying this for a while. Come on, boy, or it'll be too And late. those are the only two things they say this this entire sequence. So it's not going to be too entertaining. Um, we can't really go off the edges of the map. Uh, off the trail too far because I don't know if you noticed earlier the red vines popped up and we sort of have invisible walls it feels like I mean I stuck to the path anyways but even if there weren't invisible walls you can look to the side and see there are Come on, boy. there are leaf textured walls not too far off the side of the trail but really, all it does is distract you from what is a long and pretty uneventful sequence. Um, York, even when he's sprinting, which I am sprinting right now, cannot catch up to his father. His father will always be out of sight within a minute or two. Even if you don't pause to look off to the side of the road. Come on, boy! Or it'll be too late. This is when his fa I believe his father is leading him to go see his mother right now. If you remember correctly, his father killed his mother. Um, and then shot himself, and that is why York is a FBI agent. His father was an FBI agent too, but um... Would he have been an FBI agent or just a Bureau of in Investigations? I don't know. Anyways, this is going to show... This card up here is for his father. Come on, boy. Brian Xander Morgan. You know, these Morgans have pretty cool names, like Francis York Morgan, um, Brian Z Xander Brian Morgan. I mean, these are some really cool names. Anyway, since we got the card, we are not too far away from the end of this trail. You can kind of see me running into some... Oh, there we go.
Well, that was an interesting dream. Remember, York is a hostage right now. You are waiting here for someone, aren't you? The person you are waiting for will be here soon. Remember, York is a hostage right now. He was captured by Thomas at the end of last episode. We come toward the climax. As the angels said, I was soon fated to meet him. What do you think of those dreams, Zack? So I do care for Emily. What about you? We should take this opportunity and talk about this a bit. If I hadn't seen your come into the bar, well, you wouldn't have found this place, would you? Now, how about that? I guess I've always been lucky when luck was needed. That's why I've been able to stay in business, too. Although we have Willie to thank for finding this room, I suppose. He's got a great nose. Clever, too. He'd be a great businessman if he wanted to be. I owed you guys one anyway. And I owed York big time, too. You guys didn't tell anyone about that whole thing with Diane. I want to help you guys out. Is there anything I can do? Kason, I appreciate the offer. But this is a police matter. You can leave everything to us from here. Oh, well, okay. George, look. These cigarettes, they're the same brand that York smokes. He's definitely been here. Carol's been missing since the bar closed last night. This town will be deserted if this keeps up. What do you think is really happening here in Greenvale? Emily, let's focus on looking for York. I just hope there are more leads than a cigarette butt around here. <laughs> hey, Willie, of course! You can track his scent, can't you, boy? What do you think, officers? Let him help you out, why don't you? Oh, he'd make a fine police dog. I told you, we don't need... It sounds good, Kaysen. We need all the help we can get. Come on, George, let's let them help us. But they are civilians. Do you have a better plan? As we speak, York might be... <sighs> <laughs> uh, all right. Let's have them help. Thank you, George. But one thing. With York missing in action, I'm back in charge. And York would give me hell if something bad happened to you guys. So promise me you'll call for backup at the first sign of danger. Yes, of course. I think we're missing something here. So I'm going to look around a bit longer. You go with Kaysen and follow York's trail. Thank you, George. 
We're counting on you, boy. Welcome to the force, Deputy Willie. Okay, um, so how are we gonna do this? Well, you'll see. <laughs> Let's get rolling then. Okay, I'm counting on you, Willie. Oh, not counting on me, though, are you? Sheesh. Yep. Emily is a playable character. Not only that, she has a really bitchin' theme song, too. Those words, um... Apparently that means he's saying studiatado, testado, experimentado, which means study, tested, and apparently experienced, according to this one unsubstantiated YouTube top comment on the song's um, video. The track is actually called, in all capitals, I-L-U-V-M-O-V. Um, <laughs> this is pretty much the rest of the episode. Um, we're going to have Kaysen and us playing as Emily following Willie as he tracks down York Scent. Um, this is interspersed with talk scenes of York, uh, not of York, of Emily and Kaysen, as well as conversations of York as he's hallucinating and talking to Zack within his, um, little prison. Despite hearing this song for close to 10, close to 15, 20 minutes, it really doesn't get old. It's really, really good track and sort of unexpected for Emily. I would have expected something like either that would match her dinner dress or um, one that would be more duty oriented. Certainly not this sort of hip-hop-ish sort of thing, you know? You know, so Emily has a gun. Um, it's actually more powerful than York's 9mm, and she does get to use it. And, I have to say, quite effectively. He can be a little selfish, but he's a good dog. He stayed with me all this time, through all the good and the bad. How long have you been together? Oh, we go back a long time. I can't even remember a time when he wasn't around. I had a dog when I was small, too. He was a beagle, so we named him Bee. <laughs> Stupid name, I know. He hated being left alone and always followed me around. I could tell him anything, even things I couldn't tell my parents. He'd look into my eyes and listen intently to anything I had to say. It's like he sympathized, and he didn't make fun of me. He would just listen. When I was done talking, he'd put a paw on my thigh. My worries just faded away when he did that. It made me feel like I was just a fool for worrying so much. Dogs are great that way. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think they got a lot more wisdom than us humans. Even if they are betrayed, well, they don't see it that way. Sure sounds foolish, but you know dogs... Why, they're always happy. I'm positive that even if man perishes off the face of the earth, dogs, why, they'll just carry on, regardless. They see everything, you know. From their dog houses, they look out, and they see what humans do. Kaysen. Oh, look! Deputy Willie's calling for us. He's always like that. Let's get back to the chase. Kaysen sure does have <laughs> unexpectedly a way with the ladies, apparently. He's also way faster than I would have expected him to be. Um, <clears throat> you may be wondering why Kaysen is even with us right now. Well, he does have a sort of strange habit of 
turning up in random places. Oh, here comes a York segment. Sit down, relax, and enjoy. Why, thank you, York. You're so kind. Unlike him. If I had someone like you, things may not have come to this. York, have you ever been in love with someone? Thomas, a long time ago, I witnessed two people that I really cared about die. Both pretty much at the same time. And since then... Emily, right? She's a nice girl. But I must warn you, York. You'd be better off not falling in love with her. Thomas, considering the circumstances, whatever I say might not be important to you, but I'll say it anyways. Don't you dare touch Emily. York, I think I've said too much. It's natural to respond when someone talks to you, I guess. Everything will end tonight. You just stay there until then. So during those sequences, you can look around, um, but as you saw, it's sort of since York is wearing a cowl, it's sort of shaded on what you can see. Thomas is acting pretty weird, isn't he? He's he's completely eschewed sh his glasses. Oh, we can save here, and um, Willie will stay here until you finish saving. You can only use each save spot once, because you're on a track here. So once we finish saving, red vines will pop up out of the ground and block us from saving again. We only get one save point during this entire um, running sequence with Emily. Looks like it's about to rain soon, doesn't it? Um, there's a purple arrow over there. I'm not sure what it means. I never go investigate it. What's wrong? Something's bothering you. Oh no, it's just... I promised to have tea with, with Polly. I just remember. What's that got to do with anything? Yep, you're right. This just isn't the time, I know. But it's... Well, she reminds me of my mother who passed away. Kaysen. I've been a salesman for a long, long time. I never had time to talk with my mother, you know. Sales, they were the thing for me. No matter what happened, this was more important. So, even when she was sick, I put more energy into my work, which I regret now. And you know... When I heard she died, I was... I was on my way home, all happy. I closed a big deal in Jersey. Just when you want to give something back, you got no one to give it back to. Well, that, that's when I met her, Polly. I thought heaven had given me another chance. I really did. So I always stay in that hotel whenever I come up here. Oh, sure, the rooms are great, but, but in all honesty, I go there because I want to talk with Polly. Does Polly know all this? 
No, no way. I'd never say anything so embarrassing to her. She'd think I've got some crazy mother complex or something. <laughs> Right, let's get going. Deputy Willie disapproves of any chit-chat. I'll make it up to Polly some other time, I guess. Sort of creepy vibes from, uh... Case and... Case keeps up pretty well, like I said. Um... Anyways, um, right now, Thomas is our... Oh, looks like this is another York sequence. Man, York is hallucinating. <laughs> and he sure is... I wonder if he's so calm because he talks to Zack, so he's not really alone anytime. Even though Zack isn't real, you know what I mean? Um, like, Zack, just being able to talk to him sort of gives him comfort and confidence, so he's able to be unflappable even though, you know, he's being held hostage, held prisoner, by a very mentally disturbed individual with, um, no real chance of escaping on his own free power, you know what I mean? Instead, he's sort of dependent on what may or may not be an effective police force. Fortunately for him, Emily turns out to be a pretty capable deputy. Uh, actually, I'd say she's better and more competent than George has been. Really, I think she'd be a better def uh, sheriff than George is. It's only a hunch now, but I don't think Nick killed Diane. What do you mean? Me and Diane, we were, you know, pretty close. I'm sure some people might have moral issues about it all, but I'd like to think that I knew her pretty well. Every time we, we finished talking, she'd bring up art. I'd make a face, you know, boring. And she'd always say, you're so different from Nick. He's so much more intelligent. Sounds like something she'd say. Nick was one of the few people who she could talk to, you know. And vice versa for Nick, I suppose. Diane also told me that she was best friends with Nick. He'd have nothing at all to gain by killing her. But even the best of friends can end up in the worst bites. Still, the voices and footsteps I heard that night, they were something else. Much more violent, more, more horrifying. Diane's voice sounded different, too. Different. Hard to explain. Of course, I, I couldn't make out what she was saying. You told York all this? Of course I did. What did he say? I, I know, that's fine. Something like that. <laughs> Let's go then and catch Diane's killer. Yeah, that's right. Now that Nick is <laughs> now that we know pretty much who killed Diane. I mean there's no reason to keep Nick in jail once we catch Thomas, just let him go. I I do wonder if Diane and um Nick's relationship was purely platonic, though. I mean, yeah, I know he's married to Olivia, but Olivia didn't really seem up to his intellectual um, standards. And certainly Diane was more attractive than Olivia was. So, plus you know Nick always seemed unhappy. 
So I wonder. Oh, back to York again for more talking with Zack. love that track a lot, um, but the name escapes me right now, but it is a very, it, it's the most iconic song, I think, from Deadly Premonition. That and the whistle theme, which I believe is called, like, Happy Something, or, it, it's some cheerful title. I wonder where he's taking us. This is... Uh, and I understand why they're doing this, because you can't do um, dog tracking from a car. I mean, you can, but most of it is on foot. You... I mean... I don't know. So any bets on where this is going to... where uh, Willie is leading us? Along here, which, if I remember correctly, is the way to the, um, clock tower, the downtown area, you know? Not downtown, um, the town hall sort of place where we had that, um, meeting at the very beginning. I'm wondering who the mayor is. It doesn't seem, it seems like the closest to mayor is Harry or George. I mean, they're the ones who lead the no, 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 no. Are you close to the Ingrams? No. I mean, well, I always say hi when I see them at their store. Don't you think they make a wonderful family? I guess so. Including Jim, I suppose they do. <laughs> Indeed they do. The ideal family, I'd say. You know that I look after Isaac and Isaiah pretty often, right? They talk a lot when I take them out. Yesterday, Mama and Papa, <laughs> and this morning, Grandpa, always about their family. Just listening to them makes me feel so happy. I don't have any brothers, you know. Maybe I'm a little jealous of those two. That's why when I come here, I always pay them a visit. Greenvale is really like a second home to me. I can tell. <laughs> Deputy Willie's calling again. Enough about me. Let's get going. Oh, we're back to York again. Whew. Golf club is such a crappy weapon. When I first met her on the bridge, she could so dignified. jarring, honestly. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's pretty cute, but... I wonder what about Emily made him fall this way, you know? It's starting to rain, and good news is we are almost to the destination. 
um, where Willie is leading us. That's right, we're going to the clock tower. Seemingly where the where all the purple fog began. I, I am pretty sure that um, Thomas is tripping on that purple fog. He might have been harmless at one time. He seems like he would be, but now with that purple fog, you know, just screwing with his mind. Come on, Kason. Come on. Well, oh, there we go. No? Willie, York is nearby? Good job, Willie. Can we stop running now, please? Here's something. Willie's speed changes. Even though he looks like he's running faster, he's actually moving slower. Um, rather than keeping pace with us sprinting, he's actually a bit slower, but he's also quite a bit faster than just walking. It's like it was in the art gallery. Hey, so we took the long route here. You weren't playing with us, were you? George, we found out where York is. George? Kason, I'm going in alone. Hey, hey! You didn't forget what George said. No, I haven't. And that's why you get to stay out here and keep trying to contact him. I'm just going to check things out. I'll stay out of danger. Trust me. Okay, if you say so. I'll take care of this here. That brings us to the end of episode 32. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.